This is by far the best way to record your screen on Mac. And if you haven't heard of it, it's called Screen Studio. And best of all, it includes a lifetime license when you purchase it. Now there's a lot to this app, so let's dive in. Now you can see here, I already have Screen Studio up. This is the panel that opens up when you open the app and you can move this around just like that. And let's just go over all the options. So of course you can close the program here. You can pick what you want to record and that includes recording an iPhone or a iPad, which is a great feature if you're an app developer. So once you select an option, it actually lets you see the preview here and the resolution it'll be in. And you can also pick a window. You can see here I'm hovering over Arc. And what I love about this option is it lets you actually resize the window to a specific resolution. Now this is great depending on what you're recording. Um, I like to do 16 by nine resolutions. So I'm gonna do something like that. And you can see it resizes the window automatically. And of course you can just do an area like any other screen recording app. And it gives you the exact details there. And you can also record from a device, as I mentioned before. And it also has options to enable a camera. You can see here, I'm gonna enable my FaceTime camera. And you can move that around anywhere you want. And of course, you can select a microphone, just like any other app. You can even reduce the noise and normalize the audio, which is a great option if you're just using the microphone on the MacBook itself. And you can also record the system audio. Now, these are pretty much basic options here, and these are the advanced options. You can change the countdown, hide the icons on your desktop, things like that. Of course, as you can see, Screen Studio has all of the basics of a good screen recording program. That's obvious, but the real magic comes in is in post-production. So I'm actually gonna record a little clip here and we can dive into the editing options after you finish a recording. So I'm just gonna select a window and I'm gonna pick arc here and I can hit start recording. Let me move my window here. So for example, I'm already recording here and I'm just gonna record a little clip saying, hey, it's Andy and I'm here using Screen Studio. So let's scroll down a little bit. Here's the official website. Um, I'm just gonna show you some examples of things that are gonna be helpful to show while we're editing. I'm gonna highlight some text here. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm just gonna drag my mouse on some elements here. And of course, I'm gonna show you the pricing just so you see that. So now that we've recorded a clip, let's dive into the editor. And all you have to do here is hit the stop button. Of course, you can hit uh, restart or delete the entire footage, but I'm gonna hit stop. And this is where the real magic happens is in the post-production. I just love the way that this is laid out. I've actually used it multiple screen recording programs and they usually have really annoying editors, but the way that they've laid this out is so simple and so easy and so useful. And that's really the main thing. So let me show you how it works. So first you can pick the resolution of your video and you can see here it's based on aspect ratio. Typically you're probably going to want to upload a video at uh, 16 by 9, but if you're making a video for TikTok or something like that, you can do vertical and you can see here it actually changes the entire uh, aspect ratio of your video, including the recording here of the webcam. Now I'm going to mute the clip here just so we don't hear it. So now I'm just going to hit play to show you our clip while it's vertical and you can see here it follows the mouse precisely which is really just great, especially if you just want a quick way to upload a video to TikTok or Reels. So let me go back to the beginning and go back to our 16 by nine aspect ratio. And you can also crop the video if you want to select a certain portion of the screen, but I'm gonna keep it to full screen as I like it here. Now I'm basically gonna go through the options one by one and show you everything this app does. So let's go in. So first you have background and screen options. Now this is awesome because you can pick the wallpaper that's actually displayed. You can see here, I'm just cycling through. Um, you can pick a gradient. I mean, there's so many options here and it's just such a great way to make like, a fresh perspective on your recording. And you can even change the padding around the recording. So if you just want it to be full screen or have it be very small, you can do that. And you can also select an image if you want. So you just drag an image here and you can add background blur. But I love the default wallpaper options here, especially the ones from the new Mac OS. Uh, and you can change the rounded corners. I like uh, just keeping it default. Now, if you didn't realize that this is so well done is that it centers the recording for you. So you don't have to worry about actually centering the window that you're recording on, which is just awesome. I'm just gonna keep saying how good this app is because it is really that good. So now that we've gone over the background options, let's dive into the cursor options. So you can see here, we can hide the cursor. If we want to disable it completely. We could change the cursor size, depending on what you're recording, that can be helpful. You can also change the symbol. So if you're recording an iPhone clip, you can change it to a touchscreen style uh, symbol there. Now, one option I really like here is hide cursor if not moving. 
So that'll just hide the cursor after your uh, cursor stops moving for a few seconds, which is just such a great option. Also, if you're trying to record a looping clip, for example, for a demo for a website, you can do the uh, loop cursor position here. It'll just bring the cursor back to its original position. And of course, there's advanced options that I'm not gonna dive into. Now, there's also the camera options, and that's of course the webcam that I have up here. You can pick the size, so what I love about it is that you can pick a large size like this and we haven't touched on the timeline yet, but this is the real power of the app. It actually zooms in when you click. So you can see here it automatically scaled the webcam here and it alters that scale based on the size here, as you can see, which is so great. You can see here it says camera during zoom. You can also mirror the camera if you want, depending on what you filmed and change its position. So another option here is actually captions and you can see here it'll use AI to actually make a transcript for you. So I'm gonna hit generate transcript just to show you how it works. This usually takes about a minute. Oh, it's already, it's already done and it only took a few seconds. Um, and it adds captions on the video. While we're editing, I'm gonna highlight some text here. Down. Like I said, overall, just everything you need for a great screen recording. And there's also options for your animations. So every time the mouse moves, it actually has different animations here. So if you want it to be slow or if you want it to be quick, you can do that uh, or rapid. Of course, there's a bunch of options here. I like the default mellow. And one of the other cool things is it actually blurs your cursor and smooths the movements. Now, if we turn off smoothing, you can see it's just like how I did it on my MacBook touchpad. It just goes really quick and things like that. But if we turn that smoothing back on, it makes the movements appear nice and smooth. And I love how it just adds these automatic zooms. Now let's dive into the timeline a little more. This is where there's a lot of other options, including changing zooms. So I clicked here to highlight this text. So you can see here it automatically added the zoom area. So it zooms in and shows you what you're doing. Now you can change the options here. You can disable the zoom, of course, or you can change the zoom level. So if you just want like a little bit of zoom, you can do that. I like to also do manual, so you can actually select the area of the screen that is the uh, focal point, change the zoom le level, so if you don't want it to move around like it was, and you can see how that looks here. It's just so smooth. I'm gonna leave it on auto where it follows the mouse though around. And you can also add your own zoom levels here by just holding and clicking. So it'll just go by default to the, where the mouse cursor is, so you can see it's following the cursor. And you can also change the glide speeds here. So if you want to change the amount of speed that it glides on, you can do that. You can also right click on any clip and hit set speed and change the speed of the entire clip if you want to have it go faster. And you can also split clips. So if you don't like a certain area in a video, you can just cut it out like this, select it here and delete it. And they even have this button here, you can undo the trim. And I've just been really impressed by how this works because if you have a zoom, for example, and then delete a segment with the zoom, it'll actually properly remove that zoom area, as you can see here, I'm gonna undo that. And if you spend a lot of time changing the settings here, you can set up a preset on the top right and you can name it and then bring it up in a later project, which is a great feature. So now that we've been over all of the features of Screen Studio, I'm gonna show you the export options. And you can see here, you can export it as an MP4, a GIF, different resolutions, and different quality levels. I love this option here. You can copy it to your clipboard, so you can just bring it over to an app like Twitter and just paste it in or export the file, which is typically what I do. And after you're done with the project, of course, you can hit exit and it actually saves it and it includes all of your source materials. So if you have an editor, you can just have them have the program too and open the file and have all the assets all in one file, which is really helpful. And the last thing I love is that the creator, Adam, is on Twitter and he's always sharing updates. There are so many updates that he pushes out to this program that it, it really blows my mind. That thing that I showed earlier where I split a clip, that actually wasn't initially in the app when I had it, and he updated it and included that split clip option, which just became an essential feature for my Screen Studio workflow. And if you're interested in getting Screen Studio, you can follow the link in my description, or you can go to screen.studio to buy it. As you can see here, you just pay once and you can use it forever, which is a great thing, especially because every app is turning into a monthly subscription. As you can see, I just can't give a high enough review to Screen Studio, especially if you do a lot of screen recordings obviously. And I hope you enjoyed this review of Screen Studio. If you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more reviews in the future, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See ya.